guys and welcome back to Wonder Walkers. In this video today we thought that we'd go through some of the things that we feel are travel photography essentials. As you guys might be aware we have done a lot of traveling over the last five to ten years together and we have done a lot of photography along the way. We are both photographers in our day-to-day -day lives so we thought we'd go through a few things that we feel are really beneficial for a lot of people out there who might be starting to do more travel photography or who are fully beginners in the field. The first thing we want to talk about is having a lightweight camera. This is something that a lot of people probably don't think of initially uh, but we think it is really really important we have done travel to multiple countries around the world with big bulky heavy cameras yeah. and to be honest it's not fun it's not it's really not like I for a long time I used to bring my Canon uh, Mark IV so 5D Mark IV and my 5D Mark II on overseas trips when Dan and I used to travel quite a bit and it was really not ideal. A lot of the time I didn't even want to take my camera out to take travel photographs because it was so heavy and I already had so much weight during the day when we were sort of backpacking around Europe and doing that sort of thing. Um, I had so much to carry already. I did not want to put in a camera and lenses that weighed quite a few kilos. Uh, this is why something like a mirrorless camera would be wonderful if you're looking at doing more travel photography. Uh, it doesn't necessarily matter what equipment you do have, like we're just going to stress that. Like start with whatever you've got and if you've got a heavier camera, well then so be it. You've got to make use of what you already have. But we do recommend if the opportunity comes along for you to get something that's more lightweight in terms of a camera or even having if you've got a heavier camera and something else that's quite lightweight that you can take around during the day on a day trip or something like that when you're traveling, it's really, really important because you will save yourself a lot of back pain and stress and and just a lot of weight in your carry-on luggage as well. The second thing we want to talk about is having an all-rounder lens. So this is usually with a DSLR or a mirrorless, something like a 24 to 70 or even a 24 to 120, something in that range. This is really great for taking wide landscapes, it's good for taking uh, portraits, it's good for taking just general photos. It's good because you've got a bit of a wide angle there, you've also got a bit of zoom and you can use it for portraits and both travel and landscape photography very easily. These types of lenses are very versatile and they really do help uh, reduce your weight in your bag if you can just kind of stick to bringing one or two lenses along like that. It does make your time as a travel photographer a lot easier when you are traveling. While we We've been traveling over the last six or seven years uh, we've had the heavier cameras but we've also tried to stick to just having one or two lenses and the lenses that we always picked was like a 24 to 70 just because it's the most versatile lens most of the time I just left that lens on and if I did have a second lens with me I most of the time just never used it because I never really needed it I used to use a Nikon D300 S with a 24 to 70 now I'm using the Sony a7 III with a 28 to 70 and that's the only lens that I really take traveling with me now whether it's just to the local beach or if I'm going to go overseas when coronavirus is sort of died down a bit. But the reason we got the 28 to 70 over other lenses is because of the versatility. It can go wide and it can go up to that 70. And the reason that we went for the 28 to 70 over some other lenses because of that versatility. You can go the 28 which is fairly wide but you can also go to the 70 which is good for things like portraits or zooming into certain things. And depending on the style of your travel photography or what you like to take photos of or how you like to take them, you might prefer to go for a much wider um, range there. You might prefer to go from 16 right up to 120 like what Dan was saying. You might prefer something that has that wider range than a 24 to 70. But 24 to 70 always suited us quite well as we tended to take a lot of portraits when we were traveling. So that was something that we found that worked for us but yeah it definitely saves on weight in your carry-on once again probably the most important thing on this list is having a comfortable lightweight and very accessible bag we have done numerous trips where we've had a crappy uncomfortable oh, inaccessible yeah. bag and it just makes the whole experience really really awful awful and it's frustrating as well like it just makes you not want to take photos when you've got this heavy bag or if it's not accessible like I've had quite a few bags over the mm, years that have not been very same. accessible when we've been trying to get our camera equipment out on the go to take photos it just makes you not want to do that it makes you not want to reach into the bag because you might have to pull out a lot of stuff to get to where you've got your camera gear and it's just 
it, you've, you've got to find something that works for you. A lot of people find that this is more of a personal preference thing. Um, I just find that accessibility is the big thing with being a travel photographer at times. It's, it's better to find something that's easy to get your camera gear out of. Obviously you want it to be secure enough that not anyone's just going to be able to rip open your bag and get stuff out. But I think it's good to have something that is very easily accessible and something that is lightweight, like Dan was saying, because it, once again, you, you want to save on your weight when you're traveling around, especially if you're backpacking or you're walking around all day, you don't want to have extra weight where it's not needed. The next thing on our list is having a tripod. And I think that this is really vital for most photographers in general, but especially for travel photographers, especially when you're taking photos of things like animals or landscapes, you need to have a steady surface. And the best way to do that is with a tripod. But it is really important to have a lightweight tri tripod as well. Something that's really important being a travel photographer is to have as little weight as possible. So cutting down on the things that can take up weight, so the camera, the lenses, but especially the tripod. Some tripods, and uh, including the one that I have that the camera is sitting on right now, is quite heavy and takes up a lot of room in my luggage. So something that even I think I need to do for my kit in the future is to get an even lighter, smaller tripod, but still is relatively stable and sturdy. Something that's compact as well is so preferable. Like if you can pack it up in your luggage easily enough and you don't have to necessarily have it on the outer or you don't have to have it sort of flopping around anywhere, that's always good for tripods. And even if you can get something like a gorilla pod or um, something that's smaller that you can use kind of on the go, that really helps too with taking a lot of travel photos we've found. And the fifth and final thing on our list is having multiple batteries and storage. So when we talk about storage, we're talking about like SD cards and CF cards and even hard drives. So it's really important to make sure that you empty your cards, but also have some spare cards because you will definitely fill up your cards. But with your hard drives as well, you have to be able to put them onto a computer and have a second backup for your hard drive. You really do need to have a lot of storage. Batteries is another thing as well. We found that uh, we've been in places where we haven't been able to charge our batteries and they've died and we've literally run out of batteries and we've been un unable to take photos. In 2019 when we were in New Zealand we were traveling around in a camper van and we were staying in a lot of unpowered sites and unfortunately with our vlog camera which is the Can Canon G7X for some reason we've never actually gotten a second battery so we've only ever had the one battery <laughs> and within about three hours of uh, videoing and taking photos with that thing it would literally die and then we couldn't charge it uh, because we were staying in unpowered sites and we'd be there for two three days at times So there was one camera automatically taken out of our kit that we just couldn't use some cameras like the a7 that we're shooting on now Suck up a lot of battery really quickly So it is really important to have extra batteries depending on your camera You might need two three four Five, even more depending on how long you're going for and where you're going as well also depending on what you're shooting your battery life will be sucked quicker and um, things like long exposures like we were taking photos of the northern lights a couple of years ago in Iceland and my batteries were getting hammered <laughs> and I probably could have taken even more photos if I had more batteries so you've got to take that into account depending on what you're photographing your batteries will suck the juice a lot quicker. There's nothing more frustrating than not having enough space or not having enough batteries when you're traveling. Um, it really does compromise you potentially getting that really great shot for your portfolio. And it's just something that we've found is just so unnecessary and so avoidable mm -hmm. um, at the same time. So definitely that is one of the top tips today that we would recommend is to get enough batteries and to get enough storage as well. So thank you guys so much for watching this video today. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to our channel already, please make sure you click the subscribe button and the notification bell to make sure you see all the photos and videos that we have coming up in future. And we hope that you learned something new today. We hope that this video was a little bit more enlightening for you, maybe as a beginner travel photographer. And let us know if you liked it. We'll see you in the next video.